Before we kick off, though, with everything else, and is Ron. It's good to see. You. It's good to see everybody. You know, uh, I'm not doing so well remote. I can tell you. I'd be honest with you. I got two restraining orders on me. One from Dunkin' Donuts and one from the mail carrier. <laughs> <laughs> Please talk to me, <laughs> you know, sir. Can you move along? There's a line. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You. But it's good to see everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, so I just want to start off. We'll kick it off with. Uh, uh, our associate dean here in CJ department. Many of you already met him, et cetera. He's uh, Dr. Hector Garcia. I pulled him out of retirement. <laughs> Just when he thought he was out, they pulled me back in. So I'm going to cut over to Dr. Hector for any updates he has. We've got some great things going. I think you'd be pretty excited to hear it. Hector, you're on, brother. All right. Good evening, everyone. I see, I see a couple of friends. I see Mo. I see Chris. I see Ron. Let's see who else. All my all my peeps from Tara's here. Wow, I haven't seen you, Bill Cox. Gosh, I know almost everybody here. How's everybody doing tonight? Good to see you. And those that I don't know, Mike, Jim, nice to meet you. Um, anyway, Hector Garcia. Uh, I was a faculty member for a while, adjunct, um, team lead, academic partner, and then, like Jeff said, he took me out or tricked me out of retirement to come in. So my primary responsibility is the graduate <laughs> program uh, over here. So Jeff is handling the undergrad and I'm taking care of the graduate. But on the side, we've got a few projects that are, are very, very exciting. Um, and I think the most exciting of them all is the, the podcast that we just launched um, a few days ago. So I sent out a, a communication to everybody. So if you get a chance, if you get a chance, go in there and, and listen to that. And also on the bottom of that email that I sent out, I, I asked for any volunteers, anybody that had a story. So if you have something to help another instructor, if you have something to help a student, particularly any type of, of great stories, uh, I've been getting a lot of contact from the psychology department and uh, they've been they've been contacting me with their stories and I've scheduled three or four with them. So. CJ people, except for Rob and I think Chris, were the only two that contacted uh, myself or Jeff. Please let us know. It, it's our podcast, but it's starting to get infiltrated by sociology and political science and, and now psychology. So let, let's get in there and give these students um, and listeners something that they can go on. So if you get a chance, I'll put it in the chat box also to let you see it. Um, and if you get a chance and you want to come aboard, let us know. We'll set something up with you. It's a, it's a great time over there in the, in the podcast. Um, number two, um, we participated in a simulation in a class simulations project uh, a few years ago. There was a session on the ground over there in in Manchester where students participated in a role play scenario. So our sociology dean and Jeff got together, and I kind of hijacked it in there to create scenarios for students um, based on potential bias situations. So we had a police officer who was responding to a call from uh, a person with very strange views about two women who were walking by a newly opened power plant. They were walking on a public sidewalk, but those two women happened to be Muslim women in full burqas and veils. And so the students had to act out, take the role of an officer, take the role of one of the two women, of the caller, and what how they would interact with that person. What right did they have to stop them um, when they answered? So I think for students, uh, it is a great opportunity. So if you see that come up again, I highly encourage you to get your class over there, send them over, to participate because we only had a handful of students and we had to take some of the roles ourselves and we loved it. And so that's going to segue into my last um, update, which is digital storytelling. Um, we did have a three tips in 15 minutes uh, a week or two ago about digital storytelling. So I, I saw it and we're going to run with it to create some digital stories. If you don't know what it is, Google it, digital storytelling to include some digital stories in some of our classes and some of our activities. So again, if you are interested, I, I put it out there. Please contact me, contact Jeff, um, participate, be part of it. Get in the inner circle here 
and let's do something great. And the university is going to be behind us. Um, everybody's very excited about this digital storytelling, and we could always use your your expertise. So come on over if you can. Over on the master's degree side, uh, we just closed out our semester. All grades were in on time, so we did very well with that. And we are possibly looking at a revision of that entire program next semester. We're waiting for the budget to come out to see if we have the approval to do that. So that's the forefront. That's what's happening so far over on our side, a few of the things. So I'll turn it back over to Jeff. Jeff, you could tell them about all those webinars too. I don't want to make all the announcements. Oh, we've got so much stuff going on. I'll drive everybody crazy, but thanks Hector for those updates. And that's just the big stuff that's going on right now between podcasts, et cetera, uh, doing an emotional intelligence uh, webinar or seminar for uh, the federal agents, et cetera, involved with Homeland Security, FBI. A lot of great things are happening, working on memorandums of understanding and you know prior learning assessment models with agencies, trying to cover uh, the country. Uh, to give uh, you know working police officers and corrections officers uh, at least so some break on tuition and courses, including their family. If you don't know, we have an MOU with NYPD uh, that includes all 55,000 members and their families whom we dis uh, discount 10% and we comp them on six courses. So we're doing really, really well in those areas. We keep moving along, working with, like Hector said, with university partnerships. So the program is growing, you know, and we need your input naturally. Um, Hector mentioned the uh, upcoming, it'll happen, I'm, I'm pretty sure, the upcoming development, redevelopment of the master's degree program. We'll keep you posted on that because subject matter experts are going to be needed, right? Um, some Many of you have already done a lot of course development. You have, you've been SMEs. I see um, a good friend, a good friend, Dr. Frank Mancini from Boston, a Boston police superintendent, retired, happily retired. Look how relaxed he looks like. Stand it. Cut it out, will you, Frank? Thank you, doctor. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a little too relaxed. I'm looking to stay busier. Hint, hint. Uh, OK, all right. Hang on a minute. Uh, my lawn is really not. Nah, so, <laughs> it's funny. I met Frank on I saw him on LinkedIn. I pulled him off LinkedIn and said, hey, are you busy? And he came in and he actually was on the initial workshop to do on the development of the new CJ program that many of you are already teaching, et cetera. So uh, we're one big happy team here. We'll keep you posted on, on everything we you know possibly. I think, Mo, you've been an SME right before. So we'll keep you posted on all those opportunities. Uh, I also want to thank everybody who do uh, just a fantastic job in the classroom. Um, Hector and I are on the coaching team, right? <laughs> you know, and uh, I think Hector will back me up on this. The, the, it, the level or the volume or amount of CJ instructors that end up, you know, on the FPU naughty list for something, whatever it may be, is minuscule or non-existent. OK, so that really is testament and kudos uh, to, to the great work you're doing. So when you do get kudos from your students or anyone, please send them on. OK, I post those in the CJ Career Council page to spread the wealth and spread the news. It gives us also the backup I need in case you get nipped at the heels by another dean for something. I always make sure that I have a, a, a strong I maintain a strong record of performance and kudos to say just a minute. Because as you know, and Hector will tell you this too, we'll go to the mats for you. We have your backs. No stress. If you're not having fun, you're not, et cetera, you're supposed to be having some fun, hopefully, because I know you're not making a lot of money. So, well, have fun. <laughs> All right. But nonetheless, a lot of great things are going on right now. So without further ado, I want to, I, you know, a lot of you have already published, you know, you're successful publishers, but some, some, of, uh, some of the faculty members in, in here tonight may have not they may not have published as of yet or looking to get published uh, looking to put a textbook together or whatever i've had the opportunity and the honor and the privilege of working with chris on a couple of two three chapters for the books he's put out and when these books do come out um i'll just give you a little hint on the process if you happen to publish a book for criminal justice you know you're you're going to have my endorsement and in all likelihood dr hector i don't want to speak for him but we, we'd like to endorse those books but we don't manage the implementation OK, or actually the contracting with the publisher to in, uh, put it in, embed it in a course. OK, um, it's really it's th there's a lot of moving parts to adoption of any particular, say, third party vendor or textbook or ancillary. And because it has a direct impact on, say, an existing course or course that's about to be developed and it has to be direct, it has to be aligned with all the outcomes and the activities in the course. If it's part of a redevelopment, just to give you a hint, 
a course that needs to be redeveloped because of a change in a book is around twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars just to get that done for that one course. So things do move slowly. There's no question about it. But if you are publishing and you have some ideas that you'd like to, maybe hopefully we can we can adopt those into into the program, undergrad or grad. Please let us know. Let your light shine. Uh, you know the, the capital on this on this roster is unprecedented, and I'm honored to to work for all of you. And I know Dr. Hector, we've all echoed those sentiments time and time again. So thank you for that. So uh, anyway, so we have Dr. Chris is here. Doc, I'm going to let you introduce yourself. I'm going to shut up. And basically, if you just want to run through your experiences, how you got off the ground, how you put this together, the, the work that goes that's been involved uh, in putting your uh, your academic textbooks together, and you're and you're on. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Hey, everybody. Um, Thanks for coming to this tonight. I'm really uh, honored to speak with all of you tonight about this textbook uh, publishing topic. Um, you know, as Jeff said, we've got some really, a uh, really deep and real strong roster here. And um, <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, as the old saying goes, I'm just happy to be here. Just honored to be uh, speaking to all of you. Um, so my name is Chris Utek. I've been with Southern New Hampshire for about four years. Um, <clears throat> teaching in the criminal justice and social sciences uh, classes here. And uh, I teach um, full time. I'm a tenured uh, full timer at College of Lake County in Grays Lake, Illinois. Um, and I'm also the department chair there. Um, prior to my life as a teacher, I was a police officer in northern Wisconsin. I kind of did uh, what I like to say is the opposite of what most people do. I, I worked in northern Wisconsin and then moved to Illinois uh for my uh, for my main career uh but um you know where it's usually uh the opposite i don't know if we have any midwesterners in the house uh the uh northern wisconsin's populated by a lot of former uh, folks from the chicago area anyway uh so um jeff had asked me to kind of just talk about um the publishing piece for textbooks i've got three textbooks out there uh a report writing textbook a uh a, um Current issues in policing textbook, uh, which is like a edited volume, and a current issues and corrections textbook, same thing, uh, like an edited volume. Um, I, you know, I kind of came up with a list of do's and don'ts. Um, I, I have more do's than don'ts, which is which is good news, I guess. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the first thing. I wanted to, the, the first thing I thought about that I wanted to say when Jeff asked me to, to do this presentation uh, is um, don't do it for the money. I, I, I hate to break it to you, but the money is not good. Uh, I have had, I think, in the four years that I've been collecting royalty checks, I have had one check come close to a mortgage payment. Other than that, folks, I mean, there's some like my report writing book. And I'll talk about this a little more later. My report writing book. I mean, I get I get enough money to take every six months to take my family out to eat once. At McDonald's. On the dollar menu. I mean, it's just the money is not good. So if you're thinking like, man, I want to do this and I want to make a little bit of money. Folks, go to the faculty success page, update your availability to two classes a semester because you're going to make you. You're going to make one may, wait, Trust me, you're going to make way more money picking up a couple extra an extra class at Southern New Hampshire every year. Um, so then the question is, Chris, why do we do it? Well, I do it for fun. I do it because I find it to be interesting. I do it for pres professional development. OK, I do it to associate with wonderful folks like Jeff Zarnick. Um, and um, if if. And I do it. I also do it to advance the conversation. You know, my edited volumes, my edited volumes, you know, the current issues in, okay? But all of those current issues, those chapters, when I look for chapter contributors, I'm looking for people that are like most of us. You know, we've got the a professional experience in criminal justice because there's, um, I don't know if you all have noticed, but sometimes uh, there's a lack of that perspective uh, in um, what our students are reading and the materials that our, stu that our students have. I mean, Southern New Hampshire is pretty good about bringing that to the classroom. Um, but in general, if you look at the at the, the, the 
the body of work out there, uh, sometimes there's a pr practitioner perspective that's missing, which is an, an incredibly important perspective. Um, anyway, so that's how uh, I have gotten a lot of a lot more people involved in the um, uh, um, process. Uh, gotten people, you know, help to get some people uh, involved in publishing and just help get people published. So, um, if you're looking for an opportunity like that, you know, to, where like, can I get in on writing a chapter? Or I've got this awesome paper that I wrote during my grad work, and I don't know where to get it published. And the man, I, you know, I put it out to journals, and they're like, we don't want to talk to you. Man, talk to Jeff. Uh, if, you know, look, you know, look me up at Southern New Hampshire if you've got something you're looking to get published. I mean, we have cut tax where you know like we might know somebody who's doing an added volume get it in there get another line on your cv get get your get what you have to say out there um i'm sorry i i'm just uh how much time do i have jeff well as much as you like we usually kill it around 30 minutes or so but if oh. there's questions or oh. enough other people have pub published too you know they can contribute some uh, words of wisdom too as well because it's not easy chris and you're right the money and not all that sort of thing but it's it's def definitely worthwhile so yeah please uh oh sure let me uh I'll, I'll just run through my do's and don'ts here quick and then i guess i'll just take some questions anybody else has been published please feel free to uh pipe in uh so uh, let's see so we have the don't do it for the money uh, do check the market because there's a lot of good textbooks out there already. And you might not have to write what you want to write or what you're thinking about writing. There might be something out there already. And I mean, just save yourself the work, especially if it's going to be a solo authored work, you know, like a, like a regular textbook. That's a lot of writing. Let somebody else do that. Um, I will tell you right now, one of the most important things I'll tell you is don't work with people you don't know. As much as possible, don't work with people you don't know. Minimize your exposure to risk. You, you know who you can count on. You know, there's you've developed a professional relationship, a professional, um, uh, you know, network. Uh, over the years and you know the people that are in there that you can count on and you know the people in there that you like writing with or that, that you like working with well you know you're going to get to know people that you would like to write with those are the people you want to lean on now it's inevitable that you will eventually have to write, work with somebody you don't know especially if you're doing like uh like an edited volume and that's fine especially if you got somebody that can vouch for them and man the last thing you want is to be two months away or a month away from your final deadline and have somebody come to you and say, oh, yeah, so I'm not going to do this anyways. I mean, that's, you know, terrible. Um, do build a relationship with textbook companies. When you're at conferences, make sure you stop stopping by the tables and talking with people. Just, you know, if for no other reason to build you than to build your professional network. But quite honestly, one of the questions they're going to ask is, so how many books do you have published? And what are you thinking about publishing it? Because they want to know what you're thinking. Whether that's from a perspective of, hey, uh, I want to get signed to do a book for you guys, or the perspective of, here's what I think you all should be doing. The textbook companies are going to want to talk with you about that. Their reps are going to want to talk with you about that. What a great way to build your professional network. Um, so speaking of publishers, I would also say do your research on the publisher you're thinking about publishing with there are publishers out there that are the place where good textbooks go to die i'm not here to talk any trash but i will just say i mean you're going to put a lot of work into that book you want to make sure that the people you are publishing with are going to put a lot of work into marketing that thing and I'm not talking about just putting it up on Facebook, okay? Or writing some, you know, getting people to write Amazon reviews. You, you know, good old fashioned, hey, talking, talking to, you know, professors across the country. Hey, we've got this book. Why don't you take a look at it? Here's the instructor materials, whatever. Um, you know, professors across the country are looking for, are looking to change textbooks all the time. You got to have a publisher that's going to do the work for you to get that thing marketed. And, yeah, Chris, and you've had a lot of luck. That's their job. 
you've had a lot, a lot of good, you got a great working relationship with Cognella Publishing. You know, how did how did that come out? How did you develop that relationship where they said, "Yeah, Chris, uh, let's get something done"? How did how did that happen? Uh, you know, Jeff, that's a great question. Um, so I had formed a relationship, uh, a professional and also just kind of like a friend relationship with a guy that was one of the um, publishers for Sage uh, back when I was a very young professor. And um, I maintained that relationship with him, you know, getting together at conferences, whatever, talking to call him if I had a problem. He'd call me if he needs something, you know, you know, put somebody put eyes on something or whatever, you know, proposal review. And so I got to the point where I had this um, paper, this paper that I had written uh, as part of my uh, second master's. And I called him up and I said, hey, what do you think I can do to publish this thing? You know, my my professor is telling me I should look to find an edited volume. You know, do, how do you do that? And he said, Chris. Don't look for somebody that's publishing an edited volume. Publish your own edited volume. I said, well, that's all well and good, but where the hell am I going to do that? You know, and, you know, this untested young fella. And he said, well, uh, I'm, I've, I actually just retired from Sage and I'm working at Cognella right now. What do you, let's talk. And so we kind of worked through the process. I mean, that's that, folks, that professional network is so important. I mean, just in any career. But I mean, if you're talking about doing the publishing thing, your professional network is really, really important to help you get that um, pub- published. Get that, get that, get that book published. Jeff, I kind of answer your question for you. Later? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, the networking, handshaking, it's a retail environment for sure. Yeah, I was just curious about that because they're very, they seem to be very good and very responsive to you and what you've needed. Yeah, well, I mean, that the policing textbook that you worked with me on, that uh, current issues in policing, I mean, that's just, that's been a real hit. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's just like any place else. If you do good work, they want to give you more work. You know, what What do you think is, you know, is, topics are, are are everything. In fact, you know, we the one of your editions where you have to do some updates and revisions because of events. A right. lot of these, a lot of topics and books revolve around or spawn from various events outside, and then the CJ mm-hmm. system reacts, and that has a direct uh, impact on publication articles or whatever it may be. So, in your mind and anyone else too, you know, um, if you were to sit down and write something now, what would be the what would you be focusing in on? And this is for not just you, Chris, but for anyone, you know, who's done some writing that has published. I think Mike, you have, etc. Uh, you know. I mean, what what's hot? Let's just say that what what should if somebody's going to sit down and start writing something, putting stuff together, what do you, what would you recommend they focus in on? Well, I, for my money, I think police community relations. I mean, you know, I I don't want to be like we're just checking a box here, okay? Right. Oh but, yeah. I mean, that's where it's at. I mean, if the community does not trust you, right or wrong, if the community doesn't trust you, you can't do your job as a police officer. Okay, yeah. and if right. the police can't do their job, the rest of the criminal justice system is going to have a heck of a hard time doing their jobs. Right. So, I mean, for me, and I mean, we're talking about this in the updates to that book that we're we're working on right now. Yeah, it's it, I mean, police community relations is is where it's at, and you know, right. over the years, the community concept of community policing has kind of you know gotten I don't want to say poo poo, but it's kind of just you know generates eye rolls, you know, in a lot of the rank and file. But the fact is, I mean, community policing is where it's at. Community policing is just a different way of doing it. You know, and we got to get that message out there. That's kind of just where I'm coming from. So going around the horn here, has anyone else have you know, published, had some good experiences or any kind of recommendations you can make? Because I know there are some faculty members here probably, you know, you know burning to write and burning to publish, you know, publish or perish and all that. Anyone have any stories I want to tell or just kind of contribute to the dialogue because it is important, you know, seriously. And it does reflect back on, you know, whatever institution or institutions you're teaching at too. You know, it looks, it does uh, re- reflect well on academic, you know, the academic quality scholar and scholarship, et cetera. So anyone else publishing here? Mike, did you publish on the generational thing relative to, you know, you did, you did do that. Did you work with a publisher, Mike? It's Dr. Mike Frost. 
No, actually, um, Jeff, that was my that was my dissertation. That was 258 yeah, okay. pages of, um, you know, if you ever really need to fall asleep at night, make sure that you try to get page, <laughs> get past page three. <clears throat> but what I have done um, since since I published that in 2011 is um, I've been working with the military. I've been working with um, private entity security. And um, I've been getting out and, and much like Chris is talking about, you know, it's all about communication. It's all about, as you opened with emotional intelligence, you know, going to the FBI Academy when I did in 2016, every single class that I was in focused or had a focus on emotional intelligence. And I really think that that's key for law enforcement today. I really think what we need to do is we need to find out, and that's what I try to do with my students, is I, I want them to find their strengths and how they can take those strengths and work with other people inside the community and inside of a future agency. You know, how do they not lose their own moral center? How do they not lose their own ethics and values when they become part of the larger context, the, the organization, where all of a sudden they feel like they can't be who they actually are? So, you know, I have all of these articles. I have all of these <laughs> chapters rolling around yep. my head that I'm working on. There you go, and Chris. It's, it's Mike. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it is. It's one of those things that no matter how long you've been around, right. um, you can have the curse of having some success. But also, I get to mentor, just like all of us do um, in these forums, Jeff, is we – in our classrooms, we get to mentor these, the new generation of officers coming on. Right. And it's, right. um, I, I, I'm just amazed at how much I'm learning from them. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is interactive. So it, so is, me... it is exciting to think about, you know, actually, yeah. and now through this, I'm getting a little more motivated to put some more words on paper. Good, good. I mean, I think one of the key focuses of bringing Chris in is to try to inspire, reinvigorate, you know, you know, any kind of thought process, anyone have any ideas, creativity and to collaborate uh, with one another. You know, the, our, our department is a family and is a team, you know, and uh, I've, I've had great luck working with a lot of adjuncts. I have presented with adjuncts and I've co-written with adjuncts, et cetera. Uh, we have a great working relationship. And it's just like I said, so much intel, there's so much capital here, you know, um, that we, it would be nice to bring those things together. So. Consider this meeting kind of that, uh, let's just say the uh, the embryo of, of, say, that thought process to get, if you're interested in collaborating, right, uh, which, which I find really, to be honest with you, Chris, very rewarding. I, I really enjoy that because, you know, it it, uh, it gives you a different perspective and it also it leverages someone else's talent you know, to put something out there. So if you're interested in writing in any form at all and collaborating, get a hold of me, get a hold of Dr. Hector, et cetera. We'll channel over to Chris and whomever else has any publication contacts, you know, and we can keep this running. Uh, I think it, uh, I think it would be a really, I, I just a great idea overall, because like I said, there's so much talent in here and you, and you're all teaching so much and you're giving back so much. Uh, but to Chris's point, it, it's great to get out there and, you know, uh, you know, let your light shine. Also too, don't forget, um, the our journal our social sciences csc journal you know whatever you're writing you know bring it on you know let let us have it you know let your light shine you're all fantastic people and uh you know you don't want your ideas to die in darkness so but thank you, you know, chris for I, everything you've shared just, yeah hector go ahead sorry yeah let me just add a couple of things if you want to get a real good feel about what the most contemporary topics are besides what, what mike said about emotional intelligence i'm delivering a presentation on Tuesday in Oxford, Mississippi to the FBI NA. I've been up there a few times presenting and all that. And guess what the topic is? Emotional intelligence, leading leadership in tumultuous times. And I call it the X factor is emotional intelligence. Every seminar that we've done, the Secret Service contacted me. I didn't tell you about it, Jeff. Secret Service called last week. We're going to do a seminar for them. Guess what the topic is? Mindfulness and emotional intelligence. So if you really want to get a feel of what the topics are, go to the IACP website, click conference, and click schedule of events. There you will see what the keynote speeches are and what all those 100 breakouts are. Those are the top topics of the day. That's what people want to know about. 
That's what 15,000 people are going to a conference to hear about. So that's a good pool of you for information. We now have this podcast. We have a natural advertising vehicle here that's part of SNU. So if you do have that idea and you want to do a 30, a 20 minute podcast to introduce it and it's already getting out there as the embryo grows, the seed grows, we can get that going for you or with us or without us, however you want to do it. But we do have the journal. Oh, by the way, the journal has an ISS and number. So it's officially sanctioned as a as a peer reviewed journal by the Library of Congress. So you could say it's published, peer reviewed. It goes through a review process and we sign off on it. We have the podcast. We're going to have digital storytelling that's going to be connected to it. And we have all these conferences that we're going to and presenting at, including the FEINA in Cleveland coming up and the ISAP in October. I'll be at also. So we're out there and there's no reason why you can't be with us and, and us publishing a, an edited journal so anything. But what are the topics that everybody's asking for? And, and Mike's on point with it because that's what they're asking for. And these are not, you know, it's not Poe Dunk Police Department with three people in it. It's the it's the Secret Service. It's Homeland Security. It's the Federal Employees Board, which is OPM for the government. We had 68 of them in a conference the other day in a session that we had. We're doing another session on the 9th for another group of 100 people. Same topic. So. Please come on, come on, join us. You know, I mean, Jeff to keep doing it all the time. We need, we need some help. We need you guys to come aboard with us and share and bring some other perspectives and, and get out and let's get out there. Let's publish a book. Let's, let's get Chris aboard. Let's, let's put our names out there. I mean, we're out there already. So come, come on, join us. And just to let you know, on a side note that if you do hook up with Hector at a conference, he buys dinner. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know that. I only anyway. buy dinner. Well, I do. <laughs> if I can suck somebody else into paying for it. <laughs> yeah, in the in in the drive-through. Anyway, I've got, I've got 1902 hours. I want to thank everybody for taking the time out, the valuable time out of your evenings to stop by here. Uh, again, thank you for all you do. Thank you for posting those Dr. C's corner cheesy videos. They really this they they're getting. I'll be honest, as cheesy as they are. The students really do like them. Uh, they really do. And I get a lot of good feedback on that. It's just part of the connectivity. Let somebody know is alive behind the keyboards is that uh, thank you for posting the uh, women in the criminal justice profession. I think Dr. Kim Miller, I'm lining her up pretty soon. I uh, just had uh, a, a great one I just distributed. And for the sake of the women who are you know, ambiguous or looking to get some career guidance, they're also willing to mentor some of your fem your women students if they have any questions as well. So thank you for posting those things. I hate to be a pain in the tail, but it's the noise we try to generate to let people know that we're alive and well. We're a living, breathing organ that really cares about them, just like you all do. And that's why we are who we are. And uh, I, I, I sincerely appreciate it. And remember, as always, if you don't have my cell phone number, you know, just send me an email, send it to you. I can't put it in the chat tonight, but call me anytime, seven days a week. I don't give a crap what time it is, okay? Please let me know if you're going, if you need help, you're, whatever you need to vent, call me. The ADF 911 system, keep that alive and well. Remember, I have your back on that. You have an issue there. Hector's jumped in on those two. You can triangulate and take some of that toxic stuff off of your plate so you're not, uh, you don't get burnt out on that. So we just want to make sure you know that you're fully supported. Don't ever hesitate to call. There's no question that's too small or st silly. You're never bothering me, okay? And I say that because I do get to me as Jeff, sorry to bother you. You're not bothering me. I work for you. It's a flat, I work for you, all right? So just as long as you know you're comfortable, I've got your back and uh, and whatnot. So that's all I have to say for tonight. Thank you again, Dr. Chris, for ringing in and, and uh, sharing those uh, pearls of wisdom about publishing. And let's keep that dialogue going. Uh, I'll, I'll send out this recording for everyone's sake. And if they want to get a hold of Chris and whoever, you'll be able to do that that way. So with that said, everybody, please be safe. Have a great night. Thanks for all you're doing. And uh, we'll catch you soon. Thanks.